Maybe if Mayor Gunther calls him, he would. Well, to be honest with you, Mr. Jaworski is looking to to lease a property from the city of Brigantine. Sure. If our attorneys have contacted his organization, uh, our consultant has contacted his organization, and his organization doesn't want to get back to the city of Brigantine, I don't think that's a good way to go in the lease. But but I think uh, like with someone they, already they absolutely that, did get back to us. To Through Fred Cerny, he's they communicated us. to us what they needed to see from us before they would move forward and with a if, negotiation if, 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 of a contract. Rick, so how is that not communicating with see. us? And, so and the, information. the information that we asked for you were there. We asked yeah. our attorney to clarify some issues with the Jaworski organization. Who's paying for the sprinkler system? And Who that pays was for this? said, Who vote pays on for my that? financial proposal, and then I'll talk to you. Okay, but again, if you vote on that financial proposal, that's not giving him the lease, mm. is it? He's no, just asking you to make some kind of a concession that he wants to know you're really interested. Basically, what I'm hearing is, you're not interested in, in, in doing it. You're no, looking at I, ways to say, I don't want to deal with Jaworski. And no, I'm saying I, just that's, work a little that's bit That's far from the truth. I, I told you before, I'm looking for the best for the taxpayers of Brigantine. Mr. Jaworski runs the course. I'm sure he'll do a fine job at yeah. it. I have no problem with that. But when it comes down to a $1,056,000 loss, I'm looking for other alternatives. And if he doesn't want to talk to about, about what the $300,000 mean, about what happens if $1.2 million sprinkler system goes down, what happens if this happens, if he doesn't want to give us those answers, he doesn't need an attorney, it doesn't cost anything, he would say, I will, I'm willing to do that, the city of Brigantine will pay for that, I'm willing to do this, or, I'm, or nothing, or the $300,000, and you're in charge of everything else. I've you seen, know, I've, we, I've, we, we were told it was a triple net lease. Well. Then the, then the idea came up that you had to pay tax pussies for profit. I have no problem with people for profit. Well, the taxes come up. Oh, no, the taxes are included in my payment. Well, that's not a triple net lease. It's the, it's the lease payment plus you pay the taxes. So right. the thing keeps going the different directions. We started out with $500,000 in, in working capital, wait a minute, for capital improvements in the first five years, in the first four years. Last then we get down to, now it's $300,000 for five years. And the council kept lowering the, the, the number of years. At no, no, man, absolutely not. When, when it was a I told, deal, I, how much was he going to put in? I, absolutely. If he wants a 24-year straight deal, there's an attorney down there, there's an attorney there. He will not, nobody in their right mind will get into a straight 24-year deal because there's no out. That's why you got five years with three year, okay. two five-year options. And That's... There, you need it out right. because if things go bad, you need it out. That's that's why he did it that way. That's and right. I said that two years ago. That's what it was going to be, and everybody said no. It's a straight 24-year well, lease, what and that's what happened. a 10-year lease, yeah. then he would and be putting more money into capital. You, if he talks to us, I, I have no problem. Okay. But again, how I, many times are you going to ask somebody to talk to us and absolutely refuses well, you know, to come back to us? I mean, how many times are you going to do it? But he's also told you what he, he needs from you for him to talk. And, and it, what, what is the problem? And like the mayor said, said that's how we got health care. You know, that, well, <laughs> we'll s sign it and we'll read it later. I, we can't do that. No, that's no, not no. negotiations. All right. But, but you're not tied into it, is what. That's right. We're, where we look, are. Am I, am I we're not tied that? into it. You're right. Andy, you keep talking about the negotiating and it Rick, started here and ended there. Rick, so you do what? negotiation for so other what? people. I do it for myself. Andy, we have a proposal. If it started out different, here's where it ended up after negotiation. Proposal? We had a proposal. Does this have a date on it? I'd love to know. I know. You're going to show me again. 9th. It's one page. I got that. Yeah, well, December, December 9th. 9th of 2014. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. December 9th. But, uh, we're, we're, in, we're in the March, four, year, four months later. Yes, Ann. Ann Winnesky, 4725 Atlantic Brigantine Boulevard. I don't know why you would go about chasing this gentleman. Um, he gave a proposal. This is his interest. Why would you chase after something that is not a, really acceptable? I mean, if it was acceptable, everybody would have voted on it previously. Um, why would you chase? I mean, that would be like me having a property for sale for $3 million and somebody offer a million and my seller started chasing him to get him to come up to a higher price. 
you got to move on and find another alternative. Find another alternative. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. And I know you understand this. We have been exploring all alternatives. And after two years, the only alternative that came up was this not-for-profit idea, the first of which we heard about last Friday, the first details of which we heard about. So you only have two things on the table. It's not a question of chasing Jaworski. It's a question of the other alternative, from what I've seen of it so far, is a terrible alternative. I'm not going to kick Jaworski to the curb knowing that that's what I got to fall back on. Yes, ma'am. No. And I, uh, I think I didn't have to respond to that because it was directed to me. Um, you still got your five. You're still and I didn't five do minutes. my right. five minutes. Um, I don't know if you have another alternative, and you know this. Is, I mean, I'm looking at the numbers. It looks like it makes sense. Why do you have to pursue something that? really isn't a, good, isn't a good proposal from the very beginning. All right. Well, we have a fundamental disagreement, Anne. I do not believe yeah, that Jaworski's proposal is a bad one. Yeah, we have a fundamental disagreement, but I don't want to disagree with you, Rick, even though I know that you're my council person, so I do have respect for you, but for um, I'm allowed to <laughs> express my opinion. I don't want my taxes going up again, if at all possible, and neither does we, anybody else. Right, we agree It has an, a major effect on the real estate market, it has a major effect on everybody's property. I think the other one, what, from what I see and what I studied, is an option that should be pursued and everybody should have an open mind and try it out and move on. Because we've been talking about this other thing for a very long time and nobody really came to the party with the right answer. No, Meaning outsiders, there was an RFP, there, there weren't really, there was one option. And what does that tell you? And if, you, if you're looking at property and nobody comes to make an offer on it, your asset's not worth what you think it is. You have to then weigh, I have an offer well, which is I not know, the offer I want. I'm looking at the numbers and I'm seeing how much revenue it's generating and I'm seeing how much cost could be saved and I think it's worth exploring. Well, these, again, does, these are the numbers we see for the see first time. I don't see the numbers that we have with Mr. Jaworski well, um, or if it's any other golf person, they don't have enough of an incentive. They can go someplace else. Well, they can you know find what? other opportunities of but people it, who are totally desperate. Right. I don't think that we're desperate. I think that there's money to be made. I think that we've made money in the past. We are certainly at the bottom of the market. It is a, a, a cyclical cycle. It goes for a 10-year period and then the market seems to turn around. And you know that we're there. Well, the economy is starting to turn, even though it's very, very slow. Monies are loosening up, and people are able to borrow again. And there are opportunities out there for <coughs> people to make things right. And I think we should take a shot. Well, because we have nothing else to lose. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I've got one point. I'd, uh, sure. I was checking my notes, and, and uh, I Paul. I apologize for not catching this earlier. There was a meeting where the Jaworskis had agreed to come in for behind the scenes discussion of, the, of their proposal, but we ended up having to cancel it because of the number of days required for the public notice and it never got rescheduled. So they were invited to come in. They, they were gonna come in. And then uh, with uh, the scheduling of the newspaper publication, we didn't have the number of days on it and, and the uh, uh, the city manager canceled it, and it was never rescheduled after that. So they were, that just, uh, going through my notes, I realized that. Okay, how many times have you reached out to them since then to ask questions or reschedule a meeting? The, uh, well, we've tried to get them to come to this meeting and without any response. So. And, and before, since well, then we, had, we had questions about who was going to take care of the sprinkler system. No, that was like that. You know, that the, the response there was they wanted to know that conceptually they were on the same page. Right. We were on the same page with them. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that aspect of it was as we discussed. Then we wanted to talk about the, the golf cart rentals. They wouldn't respond to that. No, no, they responded to that. They were they were helpful with that. We talked about releasing Yamaha carts and. No, uh, about uh, so we were getting a good price. Oh yeah, when no, we they responded to that. Yeah. So, you, you were, um, 
Just so I don't know if any if people heard that, um, the one part. They were they were invited to the meeting this evening, but they did not respond. Is okay. Yeah. Uh, well, when was the meeting that? Um, when did this occur that there was a meeting scheduled and they? I guess it had to be rescheduled. That was uh, it, it was during. Our, our, well, I don't know the exact date offhand. It was it was uh, there was a limited number of time frames because it was during football season, and so it was a Friday. It was Friday. Yeah. And it was it, it was a Friday, and but then it was, last year. It was scheduled so that was last to. Year. It, was, you know, it was 2014. So over a year ago. No, no, it was fall of 2014. Fall of 2014? Yeah. All right, thank you. And Matt. Okay, yeah, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mary York, 316 29th Street. I'd like to, if I may, focus discussion back on the lease itself. We've all worked together, um, the people in council, the people in this room on discussing the lease because so much of the burden in the, in the last year and possibly continuing is falling on the backs of the taxpayers. So we looked at an alternative as of a lease of the golf course and originally the proposal was a 24 year lease. And I think the two gentlemen that worked hardest on it at that time were Andy Simpson and Tony Palella. And then reporting back to us and uh, city council of course and the mayor so I'd like to focus on that lease because that lease is what is going to rescue the taxpayers from bearing the burden of a golf course we were told we'd never have to, well, pay for or subsidize. And that was part of everyone's understanding. So first of all, the term of the lease. Initially, I heard um, lots of flack regarding the 24-year term of the lease. So the term of the lease was reduced to a shorter term. I've also heard discussion about people saying that the option to renew was only at the option of Ron Jaworski. Well, typically in every lease, particularly in commercial leases, when you have an option to renew, it's generally at the option of the person <coughs> that would be doing the renewing, being the tenant rather than the landlord. So I'd like to really focus on that lease and what kind of terms if we want to hear this through, we've been with this for a year and a half, getting some sort of a very generalized proposal of terms and hearing from Mr. Jaworski. Apparently at one point he was interested in presenting. Is that what I heard? So I think that that ought to be encouraged. And we've given this a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of people involved in a very, very important decision. I don't think we need to slam bam it tonight. We're suddenly hearing um, after you were on the committee for a year and a half, and Tony, if you're still here, you were as well. We're suddenly hearing at the very last month or so about a not-for-profit alternative. I say that we get Mr. Jaworski here and try to fully negotiate the terms of the lease that are acceptable. And if that can't be done successfully, then look at other options. But I don't think we just, after this time and this investiture, call it to a halt because someone wants an option to renew. It typically is in the tenants. Right. Um, well, ho hopefully you, don't, you haven't misinterpreted um, my analysis. I'm not in favor of the financial plan the way it's presented, so I'm not ready to move to the next step, which is to discuss the terms. On a basic level, I don't like the fact that the taxpayers of Brigantine are going to pay the debt service for the first two years. Mr. Jaworski is not going to pay anything. So we're, we're two years into this, $800,000 right. up front without Mr. Jaworski paying anything. Well, I so I, I don't like that financial proposal. So the option that I've been given is vote on that financial proposal, and then I'll come tell you what the terms of the, the lease uh, will be going forward. So you're starting with the premise that we agree with the financial well, terms. Well, no, I'm not, st I'm not starting with that at all. I've been working on commercial lease negotiations probably for 25 years for a Fortune 100, uh, various Fortune 100 companies. Me too. And typically in the beginning, yeah. So typically in the beginning, there's kind of offers of terms and it goes back and forth and mm -hmm. back and forth. And they aren't ever the final financial um, alternatives. You're exploring terms. But I think what's happened so, here is so what we're I being told this is the final, 
final well, financial what I What I feel that you need to do as the negotiation progresses is, is have a little more specificity. In the beginning, there isn't specificity about exactly how much money it is because the term is going back from 24 years to five years to, to whatever. But at a certain point, those things need to be clarified. You're right, Phil. They do need to be spelled out what kind of improvements are going to be done and in what kind of way and what the risks and liabilities are. And all of those things, once the business terms are, are worked out, are put in the final terms of the lease. And we need to get to that point before we poo-poo right. it. Well, I think we need just to try to get to terms. I'm not saying that council's going to approve it or not approve it. Right. But council can't even make a decision. And the people can't even make a decision till we really know all the business terms. And we've got to get it to that point. We can't just stall the negotiation. Can't we bring Well, we, we have been co in contact with our attorney through Mr. Galvin, trying to get Mr. Jaworski to answer some basic questions. He doesn't have to lay out any money, any financial, anything like that. He doesn't have to hire an attorney. Yeah. And he refuses to give us that information. We asked him to come tonight. He refused to come tonight. So when do we eliminate the, uh, the tenant? Well, I you know, I, I, I have dealt with Shell Oil Company, Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, Monroe Muffler. I don't give them a lease and say fill in the blanks and give it back to me. Exactly. Right. So you but sit there and you negotiate. Well, if they walked away and says, hey, you know, when I feel it's supposed to be a triple net lease, the next thing you know, the city of Brigantine is going to be paying the taxes out of the, the rental income. That's not a triple net lease, and you must know no, that. No, it isn't a triple right. net lease. So, I mean, there are different kinds of triple And I did not, and I don't think is. anybody on this council told them to go back and make it a five-year contract. But at any rate, focusing you know. back on the lease itself, um, I, what I would be very interested in learning, and I haven't heard this yet, is what is the history of success? The reason that we're turning to Mr. Jaworski is not only the good name that he holds in sports and the, uh, the fact that he owns several other golf courses, owns or leases, but I'd like to know what the history of those golf courses are. Are they financially successful? Uh, like maybe do a, some sort of a spreadsheet about his other golf courses because he is the great white hope. I'd like to know more about Great White yeah, Hope at a million fifty six thousand. So can we get, can, is there a way that well, we there, can get there, those kind of things for but analysis? There, there might be some confusion as to where we are in the process. So let, let me try and explain, I think, where we are. Okay. And I know that uh, Councilman Simpson and uh, former Councilman Palella were involved. This, as far as I understand, this has gone back and forth. In terms of the financial offer, this is Mr. Jaworski's best and final offer, is it not? So, so this is it. So those, this, what, what we have in front of us right now is his, they've gone through all that. They've gone back and forth. And as, as Andy said, the deal has actually gotten worse. So this is his best and final offer with the financial piece. So the, the question before this council is, do you agree with this financial proposal if you do, then vote yes, and we move to the next stage to negotiate um, the terms of the lease and clarify what some things mean within the lease. If you don't agree with the financial terms because this is the best and final offer, then vote no. And, and that's where we, we are at this point. I think we need to, to kind of clarify those terms a little more. He know, will not clarify them. And know with a little more about <laughs> his history because if Doesn't he's matter. going to be it, it, deciding all it is the lease. Five minutes are up. These golf courses. Thank you. How's he doing? What's his What's his track record? And as you it's as you point it's, out, it's not Mr. Jaworski. We don't have problems. With, I don't think anybody has a problem. Well, with I've Roger heard an awful lot of naysaying lately about Jaworski. I have, I have Five minutes are up. Stalled along the way. I have the right. well, okay. and, and, and want us to just take that final step and try to develop it a little more. We've been trying to do before that before we get into a so whole what do you, when do you stop trying to do it? Well, that's the thing. When do you? Thank I, and I understand you try to get a lease back and forth and back and forth. You try to to the last second, but when the guy won't return your call or email, was that the really the case? Over. Is that where it is? He won't reach call. He won't no. return calls anymore. We'd invited them to tonight's meeting. When did with, we invite with, them? Recently? Or? 
recently and, and uh, oh, without, without a response. And I, I think that they were, and, and I'll probably speak with them tomorrow, I assume we're on TV tonight, but uh, we'll, uh, you know, we can, re we can invite them back and, and, and it's the city council's decision if they want to invite them back and, and try to hit the reset button on that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'd certainly think that's a, vi that's a potential option. I just ask that you consider that as a Thank taxpayer you. and a person that loves Brigantine, I ask that you give it one more try. Thank you. And, and you know, once again, I, I hope that Thank none you. of the I comments tonight mind. in any way reflect poorly on, on Ron Jaworski or his company. We're purely looking at this proposal and okay. what it means to us here in Brigantine. It needs to be developed. To me, it's very, very You, you know, at the five minutes, here we go. Right. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Pucci. John Pucci, 100 Sheridan Square. This golf course issue, although I've attended the council meetings steadily the past two years, really hasn't been my issue. I've had other issues. Never, nevertheless, nevertheless, Item nine on the agenda is resolution 2015-48, RE award or rejection of Ron Jaworski Golf's management proposal. Somebody needs to make a motion and a second and just simply vote on it. That way everybody will know, the whole entire council will know, the, the consultant, the public, and Ron Jaworski will know where you stand on the proposal on the table. And then you'll really know his intentions one way or another, if you get a reaction to that or not. But the proposal is what's on the table, make a motion and vote on it. And then everybody in the world will know, even the internet. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yes, Mr. Heil. Hmm? Jack Heil, 121 Washington Drive. I have a few things I wrote down here. First of all, Andy, how come you didn't do this two years ago or start this even a year ago? And you didn't start nothing, it seems, until Ron Jaworski came into it. Why didn't you do this before? Okay. I have talked when we were on the, um, the golf course committee. It was Jennifer uh, Blumenthal, Fred Cerny, and Councilman Tony Palillo. I talked about a nonprofit. It, it fell on deaf ears. This is why I'm talking about it now. It's not falling on deaf ears anymore. If, the, if you should be asking the question, if this was such a good deal with Mr. Jaworski, why didn't they vote on it last year when they had the five to two majority? Uh, well, they must not have believed in it, it either. Just, it just seemed <laughs> well, like no. since he came in on it, you came in on it. And I don't think it's right. Oh, no. I don't no, think. Mr. Well, Jaw let me just read what Mr. I Mr. Jaworski was a long time anything. ago. Let me know. put read what I got. I don't think anyone in the city should get involved in the golf course. And I don't think anyone here, any one person has enough qualifications to do it. I think you should accept Ron Jorsky's offer and it will be done in a professional manner. Everything will be done right and the capital improvements will be done and it won't cost the taxpayers anything. I don't think, Andy, your idea will work. There's no capital improvements. The money coming from this to start, the line of credit for three years is 640,000. If it fails, it's going to come back to the taxpayers. Andy, since this is your project, I think if it fails, that you should come up with the money to pay for it. <laughs> That's what I feel. And again, $1,056,000 with Ron Jaworski and you should come up with the money and pay for that. 
if it's not going to cost the taxpayers no money. You were asked a question tonight. You wouldn't answer it. You were asked if you keep you on saying apples for apples. You won't pay minute, anything. I'm talking. Whoa. Excuse me, Jack. You I'm talking. Yeah, I'll have that just police officer take you out of here. Just, just keep the tone All right, I down. will. Thank but you. I'm Thank talking. You. He's interrupting me. You don't like anybody interrupting you, Phil. You Jack, just question. if we can just remain civil and I have will. a conversation. I will. Thank you. I'm just saying that all the, the problems come up, you bring them up now. And if you, the, year, or the sprinkler system, they ask you a question. What would you do if it has to be paid? And you're, oh, apples to apples. Who the hell cares about apples to apples? You ask a question. Is Ron Jaworski might, might do the same thing you do. Where's the money coming from? Right. And that's what we have to ask Mr. Jaworski. He will not tell us if, if the sprinkler system fails, the $1.2 million, does he pay for that or does he want the city to pay for that? And so we need the questions to answer, and he will not answer the questions. He won't return our calls. So when do you eliminate and move on? Well, I see. Yeah. And again, it's not the $600,000. You know, don't forget the $640,000. I paid off $1.2 million in debt service. So even if it comes back to the city, they're still better off than they were before. Well, I still say Ron Jaworski is better qualified at it than you or anybody else here. Yeah. Well, Let I, me I disagree. I have, a, I have wait, two, wait, before two we get professionals the in the back that Excuse are me. very qualified. Excuse me, Mayor. Before we get to the next person, I want to respond to something Councilman Simpson said. The reason, Andy, why we didn't push this to a vote at the end of last year is because we made what I guess was a mistake of trying to do things the right way. There wasn't a single meeting that passed that you and Mayor Gunther didn't say, whoa, put on the brakes, we're moving too fast, we have to look at all the alternatives, while coming up with no, no you alternatives. you wouldn't talk to the now, people. Andy, don't interrupt me. It wasn't on the agenda. Andy, don't interrupt me. Right, then, Rick, if we could sum we're in the public portion, so. Yeah, I know, and Andy makes his comments, and I'm going to make right. my well, comments so in response well, to it, Phil. It, yeah, and he chose to respond by saying that the Democratic members must not have believed in the offer. Absolutely untrue. Don't speak for me, Andy, because you don't. That was a, the offer then we knew was the final offer they were going to make. We were ready to move on it, but we didn't because at every meeting, hold on, going too fast, slow it down, look at all these alternatives. Nothing happens. Was December, it on the agenda, January, Rick? February. Was it on the agenda? When do we... Was oh. it on the agenda? Hey, let me ask you All this, All these people don't know that. Did you? We, we turned around tonight and made sure it was on the mm -hmm. agenda. We advertised and made sure these people came in. Wait no a minute. No matter if you're Democrat or Republican, I don't care. You have your opinion, and you pay the taxes in this town, and that's who I'm fighting for. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican. And the reason it's on the agenda tonight is because I, in the closed session, insisted that we had to put it on. That's uh, why it's here tonight. I, yeah, I, I don't remember. And Andy, that's ridiculous. if it fell on deaf ears to when you talked about the not-for-profit in the golf course committee, why was that never brought to the full council? Why didn't you come to full council and say, I think this is an idea that we should look into? Instead, more than two years into it, for the very first time, we get a little, little smidgen of information about a not-for-profit. And in the context of you and the mayor, quite obviously, trying to set it up to vote down the Jaworski proposal so that, in effect, we have no choice but to go ahead with your proposal, Rick. as horrible as it is. Rick, <laughs> one, of, one of the things I know is that um, in your for, for whatever business history, she, Andy, sorry. one of the things I know that for whatever reason, perhaps because you talk more than you listen, um, you don't hear everything that is said. There was a, there was a lot of discussion in this council chamber about options for the golf course. Of course, every time that was brought up, you said there's only one option. There's only one option. What we talked options? about continuing to use a management company. We talked about a nonprofit. We talked about going with a lease uh, with, with any of the uh, RFP respondents. All those things were talked about. What you had before you tonight was, was a proposal or is a proposal that actually puts some numbers to how a nonprofit possibly could operate. But I do agree with you on one thing. This is the final, we've been told, this is the final and best offer. And um, I can tell you that that has been discussed a number of times in executive session. Is this the final and best offer? Mr. Cerny, what were you told? Is this? The, Mr. Galvin. Or Mr. Galvin. It actually, it actually comes through Matt, but that was the communication. Yeah. yeah. So w this is why we are at this position tonight. 
Um, and that's part of what frames our discussion. And Bob, I think you had something to say? I, Apalilla? I never remember speaking or discussing not-for-profit before tonight. There was no substantive discussion ever about a not-for-profit. There Either were in this session or in the, right. Yeah, the words were spoken, not-profit. I asked Andy more than a month ago, what are you talking about? Show me the numbers. We right. see that four days before the meeting. Is, no one is saying to vote for a not-for-profit tonight. We're showing you a demonstration of what else could be done. What you're looking at tonight is the Jaworski proposal. Are you for it or are you not for it based on what has been given to us um, on December 9, 2014 and articulated a number of times this is the best and final financial offer that we're getting. Bob? All right. How are you doing? Robert Polo to Gerard Place. Um, I hate to say this. I believe there should be more discussion. Uh, it's obvious. I mean, uh, you know, Vince, you know, said he, he hasn't even seen the technical proposal. I don't know if Karen has to this point. It's really hard. No, don't even lift it because that's the cost. Okay, I know where you're going. That's uh, the only thing there is. There's two parts of a, a proposal. There's a cost proposal and there's a technical proposal. Okay. Th that's what you get and that's what Mr. Galvin was referring to. How big is that technical proposal? It shows his financial statements. And it shows the financial too. Thank you. We were told we Good. weren't. All right. Well, you didn't hold that up before. Robert, so. I was told that we weren't allowed to see it because it had um, a lot of his financial information in it until it, uh, until it was voted upon. Okay, so now you have the financial information, correct? His financial. You have the best and final no, financial no, information, but you can't compare. I've, I've seen this. You can't compare. Well, you, again, I, I brought this up in December, and I agree with Mr. Sarah. We need to know, and I think before you vote, you can't vote on a cost proposal without knowing what you're buying. You can't say, I don't like it for $10. I don't like what for $10? What am I spending $10 on? Okay, so you need, I can't understand how you can vote on anything without seeing it. That's the most ridiculous, and, and whoever's giving you that advice, I think you should change that. Uh, with that being said, I believe Andy's numbers, um, 32,000 for marketing, you said there was 32,000 32, for marketing in your... Uh, in, in the million seventy-nine thousand. Okay. So that's how much is there currently 32,000 in marketing? Yes. If, in revenue, we currently spend 32,000 yes. a year in marketing? Yes. For what? Two newspapers went out this year with a booklet that had every golf course in the entire <laughs> South Jersey area. What, what Atlantic City Press. They had an insert with every golf course, a golf booklet. We were the only golf course in South Jersey that was not, what are we spending $32,000 in marketing for, yeah. if we are indeed spending it? Well, there's a, there's a gentleman back there. Well, I'm, you got your numbers from him. I would find that out. Well. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you got to read, you know, th these numbers here. You're, you're carrying a line of credit. You're showing this line of credit basically as income. Right. right. You're not showing sp GM's paying GM's that 700000 or the interest on that. Absolutely. Oh, that. That's what that interest expense is there? Yeah. That's not this up here, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're just, but, but no $700,000. you are paying $65,000 is what you're showing, but not 700000 the last question on 700000 is when will the $700,000 that's already been spent, I believe it was 2010, and not bonded yet, when will that bond go in so that the taxpayers know, again, what the city has to pay for this golf course? That's the total cost no matter if the nonprofit, no matter if the city runs it, no matter if Ron Jaworski runs it. That cost is a fixed cost. It's always going to be exactly. No matter who it is, it's so a fixed cost. It's going to have to be paid regardless. That's so if you want to compare apples to apples, take the debt service out of it, and let's compare income and expenses. If you want to compare apples to apples, now you, you took it out with borrowed money. Take it out. Take it out altogether. But you only have after five years. You only have four hundred thousand dollars left left on the debt. But you have to pay seven hundred thousand that you borrowed. No. The three hundred thousand dollars goes against the seven hundred thousand, so it leaves you four hundred thousand. Well, you're not showing that on here. Which you, you paid off one point one fifty five. 
and the taxpayers didn't pay. But you borrowed seven hundred thousand to continue operating without any repairs or any maintenance or anything like that, Andy. And as you yeah, know, it's like it you own a lot of property. Things go wrong with the you, property. You can't, you can't Who's going to pay for it? Maintenance, maintenance is included well, in the operation. And that's in the million seventy nine. I'm talking about capital improvements. Was, if something breaks, you, you own a that lot of real estate. Do you have a reserve in your real estate if a heater work, if the heater breaks? Cost is in there. Do you have a reserve if a heater breaks or for say you, you have a reserve, okay, for a capital improvement? That's all I'm saying. And before again, before you vote no, at least know what you're voting no to. You do not know. Bob, when, and if when you I, haven't seen when, it, oh, I have seen it. Now how come you have seen it and they haven't? Seen what? This. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we all saw it. I'm not sure we told I've you you can't see it. it. I've never seen it. My point is, I've never seen my it. point, Absolutely. but that's a very, exactly though, but you have two council people here that did not it's see not this proposal. Council. You haven't seen it. No. That's you haven't I seen it. That binder. I rest my case. <laughs> Mr. Galvin just told me that everybody I, I accept the new council yeah, the, have picked up one of these and signed off on it. Yeah, the multiple copies for, from both bidders came right. in, and uh, Jennifer Baumgartner, is Baumgartner or Blumenthal? Blumenthal. I get confused. Right. Uh, Blumenthal. Blumenthal. Uh, Blumenthal distributed them to, the, no. but if they're new city council members since then, no. I don't know if they ever got and, them. And right. There's no reason why they can't see that. the proposal, but you never got as, as Mr. Galvin said, there's What's in here is a, a maintenance sketch that basically outlines how often the lawn's going to be mowed and, and defines some other terms as well as the financials uh, for Mr. Jaworski. Isn't that what you guys asking? No. No, I'm looking, I'm looking at this. <laughs> no. No, it is not. No, it is not. That's what we've been trying to ask Mr. Jaworski in, in and the, we can't get back to him. In the RFP, that they responded to that's what detailed the maintenance schedule and and operating hours and minimum requirements like that and so they had to respond back affirmatively that they're going to honor that and that becomes part of the contract once it's executed okay. i think uh mr palillo uh mr palillo uh one of the things you know we, we talk about um understanding what we're voting on the way the resolution is written it seems to me that we'd, we would be agreeing on the financial statements or financial package that's been presented. I don't think that those numbers meet the needs of the taxpayers. I think Mr. Shea brings up a very valid point when he talks about what happens should there be, you know, the sprinkler system and it cost a million dollars. If there's a minimum that's in there of $300,000, who pays the difference of that? One of the major concerns that's out there is the liability of the taxpayers of Brigantine. So as I look at the financial proposal that's put, it, put before us, I don't think it meets our needs. Okay. Right. So, right. But me, means what, though? Well, but actually, actually, what does it mean? What's in, the, what's in the proposal is different than what's in the uh, technical proposal because they changed. The numbers changed. It, well, it, it, it keeps going. Right. We did. Right. Okay, we did that. We're not bet. Right. We're, we're not six million dollars. Well, Bob. Bob, let me let me um, clarify yeah. once again. Six million dollars. I don't know where you're coming up with that. But. What was said was we should have the, the discussion of the golf course proposals at a public meeting, an advertised public meeting. Mrs. Phillips, I think, asked would it be a separate meeting. We said we could do it at a council meeting. So we're having that meeting tonight to discuss this proposal. However, it was advertised, it's part of the agenda, it is listed on the agenda to, as a resolution here this evening. But what I'm getting at is, there has, this represents the best and final financial offer that has been provided. Now, whether the terms, I think the language is the same in here, however, we haven't been able to get any clarification. And just to read you one part of this, um, where it says capital improvements. 
Ron Jaworski Goff will pledge to complete an average of $50,000 per year in capital improvements over the life of the 24-year lease. We know that's changed. In fact, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, this is a commitment of a minimum of $1.2 million in capital improvements over the life of the lease. 24 years. 24 years. Ron Jaworski Goff agrees to pay of, uh, of the master plan, agrees with to many of the master plan improvements set forth. However, it is difficult to assess the necessities of the course until the company operates it on a day-to-day -day basis. Ron Jaworski Goff believes in prioritizing. The company does not want to commit to a building a new T in a certain area if drainage doesn't work properly. Therefore, Ron Jaworski Goff will not commit to any specific master plan improvements besides the $50,000 a year. So I think we're kind of being told there that we're going to, you know, that we're getting what is now whether someone decides that they're going to do more than what they have agreed to, um, I don't know if that's, that's possible given the fact that we've been uh, told by many of the experts here in this room that the, uh, the revenue would not support millions of dollars in capital improvement made by a for-profit um, operation. So I go back to my, my analysis of this is that there is a minimum investment that is required under these terms, not a maximum. And I think the language in here speaks to that. Uh, whether it stays with the $50,000 a year um, or whether it, it goes to what we have in here right now, which is the $300,000. That, that's where we are right now. Well, let me ask you a question, Phil. Many times already tonight I have heard, coming from that end of the dais, comments about we didn't get details, we don't have details from Jaworski, particularly with respect to capital improvements, when the phasing, what's going to get done. And we've also heard, which is untrue many times, that Jaworski refused to talk to us and won't return our phone calls. Mr. Galvin has explained that that's not the case at all. And we all know that's not the case because we did get feedback as to what Mr. Jaworski wanted. So, Rick, you sat in the same Bill, meeting with Phil, could you, you please are stop you interrupting planet? me? Were the, Andy, were, could you no, please stop I'm, interrupting no, me? No, I'm not. That's ridiculous. Mr. Galvin just told you he d does not get a refer um, email return from Mr. Jaworski. He said that Jaworski did agree to meet at one point and it got canceled. So don't that yes, trying to that characterize was, that, that was a year as, ago. Yeah. No, do no. not characterize them as being no. high hand or ignoring us. If you want the details that you claim at some points you don't have, then invite Jaworski back. One time either show you up and explain it. He said that last time he said no, he wouldn't we did come. Not. Andy, after sitting on his proposal for months, we told him, okay, it's gonna be on March fourth. Well, that may not work for his schedule, that may not work for their schedule. Did you get an email to that fact? Did you get an email to he couldn't make oh, no, it tonight? I, no, I made three phone calls. Uh, and you to, didn't get an answer, correct? No, no response. No response. Right. Thank you very much. All right, so based, so based on I that. I guess the schedule's full. Yeah. So you just want to toss out the Jaworski proposal. Is it because he's high-handed? Well, listen to what I'm asking you. Is it because you think he's high-handed? Is it Hold because, on a second, Mr. Burns. Is it because you think that you don't need to hear the details of the capital improvements or other issues, or when, is it because... When are we going to hear him, Rick? How many it, times are we begging this guy to come? We, we are not begging him. Time, we called him one time about he coming and meeting with us. He said three times. He was... Three no, times, he, he reached said, out to him. And wouldn't, for and wouldn't one, return for a one call. given session to well, be three here. Three times he, he didn't return he a call. He was previously asked to be there, agreed to be there, and we canceled it on him. So, you know... Three times. All of a sudden, this is like a rush. We have to get Jaworski out of here. Just tell me, is it because the financial terms on the proposal are something that under no circumstances you could ever accept? Is it because not a loss to the because the details? Not a loss to the because you need of one million dollars. Please, I've heard it now. Is it because well, the details? I, I heard you're you're uh, talking head Andy, for a while Andy, too. you're borrowing money to pay borrow money. I'm yeah. not impressed. Well, <laughs> Rick, your well, vast Rick, business skills. You know, Andy, we, you know what? We've run as many golf courses. I've run none and you've run none. Let's go yeah. back to the uh, public I ran business. You have never ran a business. Public comment session. Mr. Burns. There, there's no, uh, excuse me. My wife, me. Wrote, uh, 45 heels worth, B.J. Burns. 45 heels worth. Uh, my wife woke me up and said, you're talking about contracts. Now, I'll take anybody in this place and I will prove beyond a shadow of doubt I negotiated more contracts accidentally 
then you don't purpose. I even negotiated a contract on labor board for two years, which was never done before I done it and never done since. And I've been retired for 25 years and before that 10 years I was doing something else. All right, now, what he done to you, what I heard, my wife told me, because I didn't, I was, I, mean, I was watching a cowboy picture. Anyway, I was, you know, I was great, the bad guy always loses there. It's not like uh, life. Anyway, what happens is, he offered your proposal. This is it, that's the bottom line. What gets me mad with you, Mayor, is it's nice to be nice, but you still got to do the job. You got to put a motion, you make a motion to accept it, you second it, and you holler out their names and you vote it in, stop all this stuff. You're keeping my wife awake, she's watching it. <laughs> And you know, John, now look, they, if they, they, let me tell you something. Now you're talking, now you're a lawyer, right? You negotiate contracts. You're so smart. When you had a majority, you should have put it through, but you didn't. Too late now. Okay. Now, what? Don't laugh, Fred. And I, let me tell you something. Lanik, Cape May, Gloucester, Salem, Camden, parts of Camden Town, I used to fight with the Philadelphia group. I had all, I was president of the building trades. Imagine 100 men I had no. So when you're talking about contracts and you're talking about men, and when a guy tells me that he ain't gonna show up for the contract, God bless him. I mean, I wouldn't wanna deal with him either, and, but I will visit him. And, and it don't make sense to me. What you're doing here is going over the same thing. He keeps hollering that, and what, what, what in the world are you putting up with this kind of crap for? I can't understand you. You're a businessman putting up with this stuff. I told the mayor before when he run. What, you make 11, 12,000 a year and you're getting all these insults and everything else and all. That don't make sense. He, all he does is, see, he's a fire chief and, and a police chief, right? These ones here say, you guys are not qualified to do the job. I knew goddamn why you were. I, I mean, they, they, that. they, they, that's it. he's number one. You're not qualified. To, you're talking to, you're talking, you're allowing people to correct other people that are not qualified. I don't care if he's a lawyer or not. He said, sign the con you sign a contract with me and then we'll do it later. Nifty, you sign a contract with me, man. I own your body and sold your whole family. I'll fill it out later. You sign it. Yeah. So now look, Mayor, do me a favor. Let's put a motion on the floor. Let's get this done so my wife can go to sleep. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Phillips. Right. Ms. Burns, I'm gonna make a motion to plant bamboo behind your house. <laughs> Ann H. Phillips, some comments, clarifications, and first a question. I think this was brought up and answered at the beginning of the meeting, but I just want to be sure. Has the golf course debt payment for 2015 been made? The, f the partial, partial. There's $20,900 for the first quarter on that payment. Now, who's making this? Is this coming out of the utility budget or the general budget? Well, that. I don't know if they're paid 200000 out of the uh, utility. Well, I don't know if they wait, the, wait they for the uh, order in, to come in back. In the budget, in the budget, the manager's budget, the line item for the golf course was 342000 that we are paying. Yeah, I saw that. That's a deficit. I'm talking right. about yeah. the payment on the debt. It, the the debt uh, payment debt on the debt, debt, was that posted to the utility, uh, golf course utility well, budget, or was it, did it come out of the general fund? Yeah. Or Leon? Now, the initial payment that was made. In, in January. In January. It's in a golf utility budget. It was in a golf okay, utility Okay, so that came out of the it's taxpayers paid. didn't pay. There was $200 in the golf course utility fund? There's 200000 how, how much was in there? Like 202000 So that's how much went towards it? No, it was only no. a $20,000 payment. <coughs> no, the, the, the golf utility 20, yeah. paid the first payment, the January payment, 350000 in principal. And, and the, the, the interest, interest? That was billed. And the that's coming out of the golf utility. Okay, that's what I was Right now, you have a golf utility. It's March. You're running a golf utility, whether you like it or not. You have one that you're running. So the expenses that it incurs every day are coming out of that golf utility. Okay, I just wanted to ascertain that. Right, I'll come yeah. back to that. Until okay. something else happens, that's where it's coming from. <laughs> All right. Property taxes were mentioned on one of the agenda papers, and they've been mentioned tonight, which I think is rather interesting because... As government property, the golf course is currently tax exempt. So I don't know why you're figuring taxes on 
part of this, uh, the uh, Jaworski. I'll get to that. Just a minute, please. It's quite, I've spoken to the tax, county tax collector, Board of Taxation. It's quite likely that when under a lease and still owned by the municipality, it would continue in that category since it's public recreation and serves a public purpose. There is a lot of discretion in determining what is tax exempt and what is not. But evidently, there would be a good case for under a lease, it, property would still be tax exempt. So that should not be included. And you've well, got $100,000 yeah, or yeah, so. I defer to the attorney on that. Um, yes, I've heard what Mr. Cerny said, but I've heard another opinion. So I'm presenting that to you. you. you have a, your son's wrong on that. Pardon so me? The, the, the 200, the, when you go from a nonprofit to a profit, that profit company has to pay tax. No, that's not what the uh, Board, of the Board of Taxation said today. This this is a state lot of New Jersey. You can ask Mr. Galvin there. That is state law. So state There's, law. Okay. Now, the point uh, I'm making is you're putting that in there as an absolute figure, and it doesn't belong because well, there is discretion. Once again, Mr. Cerny is our attorney. We have to go by his, um, his interpretation of the law. And well, I'm, just I'm assuming that Mr. Cerny found that that is, in fact, the case. The answer is yes. Thank that, you. That being you have two issues. One is the, the assessed value that is on it, which is an absolute dysfunctional number. Right. It's not $6 million. It, it may be on it, but that's not what it should be based upon what the folks who did the reval, uh, and I mentioned this earlier. I had this conversation with them. I had the conversation with It doesn't matter the what the assessor. number is. Do they have to pay tax? The answer to that question is yes. There you okay, go. Okay, well, when I talked to the Board of Taxation, they said it's very likely no. So okay. we'll leave it at that you point. But the point is keep no that in mind I mean, when yeah. you're making your calculations. Okay. All right. Taxes on this property haven't been paid since the city bought it. And you guys are talking about property taxes, the county, and all that stuff. It's <laughs> you're misleading people. Well, no, once again, the law says that if it's I a know, I'm profit, not talking about that, Mayor Gunther. I realize there's discretion on the right. part of the lessee. What if there's uh, discretion or not? But when the, the city, uh, as the owner and the operator of the golf course, was a nonprofit. I understand right. that. That's not what I'm arguing about or discussing. I simply said that um, a payment in lieu of taxes, we'll go briefly back to that, was part of the agreement that the city made with Meadowbrook when, as the management company. Those payments, one payment was made covering five years, $149,000 plus. And after that, the then city managers canceled all those payments. The point is that charging a loss of unpaid taxes to the city, which is what you did on your sheet, if leased to Jaworski, makes no sense if it's possible that that's not going to take place. Well, the city wasn't paying taxes on the tax exempt course, so it couldn't lose, which it wasn't getting and didn't have to pay. I think people are a little confused about what's tax exempt and what it is not. And why are you talking about, you know? Thank, thank God we're not paying a payment in lieu of taxes if it's assessed at $6 million right now. Well, that's, that's not a real value either. It's, as we, I think we've all known by now, it's been much reduced. And, of course, that will have to be taken into consideration. <coughs> On the nonprofit sheet also, Mr. Simpson, um, you talk about a line of credit. Now, we're not talking about a bank here. We're talking about a municipality funded by the taxpayers. I'm not quite sure how that would work. Well, that's where you get your $700,000. Now, how, do you, how does the city handle that? Is that common practice for a city to have a line of credit for businesses? It's not the city's line of credit. It's a nonprofit organization's <coughs> line of credit. But the, the, city but the nonprofit will, organization the doesn't have guarantee. any resources. Well, they, well. they, have, they can show a, a revenue stream in the golf course based on last year's revenue that they have X amount of dollars that will be coming in to the golf course utility. You, you would do the same thing as you, as you go into business. Um, Steve, I, I forget Steve's last name Our out guess. there. Um, <laughs> he, he explains to you if you're a nonprofit and he, as say me, him, and these three gentlemen are a part of it, um, we're liable. We're, 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 we're not going to be fooling around. We have IRS um, people we have to take care of. We have people, uh, the city would, ha would come in and audit our books and making sure that we're doing things properly and everything like that. So, so the line of credit is not the city of Brigantine. It, it, it is would, the no, nonprofit. It would, you, we, we would go to a, a private bank and borrow the money. 
Based on what? What's your collateral? Based on the city co-signing for the loan. That's it. You're getting back to the taxpayers again. That's one of the major you flaws not have, here. No, it, you uh, not well, have it to is. Pay? Who's finally responsible for that? The city, the okay. taxpayers. But you're going to be respons you're responsible right now for one million one hundred and fifty five thousand uh dollars. -huh. And how did you pay it off? Yes, you you're borrowed the seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. And yes, you're, you're, you're paying you're off. You're four hundred and fifty five thousand dollars to the good if even if the sit even if the nonprofit goes bad. So you had somebody pay you four hundred and fifty five thousand uh, dollars. yes, I understand how you did that. However, your five minutes are up. Well, um did mm. Mr. Just, <laughs> no, that's Mr. okay, Mr. So, so, if you would sum up. Okay. The Thank point you. is that we have in the twenty fourteen budget, we put seven hundred and sixty five thousand dollars and we're going to have another deficit, so it appears that it'll be about a million dollars that the taxpayers will pay as a subsidy for the golf course. Now, we have paid for 2015, the utility paid it. You take two of those payments for 2016 and 2017, is what you're talking about, and we have already paid as a subsidy more than those two payments because of the declining revenues of the golf course and the condition of the course. First and of one of the things for even considering a lease is to benefit the taxpayers by making the golf course profitable, competitive, and a boost to this economy. You talk about economic development, the biggest asset we now have, which is capable of providing some of that, is a well-run, profitable golf course. It's not going to happen under a no nonprofit. And it your vast history of business it. knows that. Pardon me? Your vast history of your business skills. You, you well, I don't see evidence of your business skills, Councilman yep. Simpson. Go down to 524 paper. West Shore Drive. You see what I live in. No, I'm there's talking my, about there's what There's my you, business sir, skills. Sir, you're taking part of my five minutes. I'm talking about your... Your five minutes have been up. <laughs> Ms. Phillips, if you would sum up your remarks, please. I think in order to achieve what is best for the taxpayers, for this community, and to revitalize our economy, is to go with the lease. If you can come up with somebody else, which evidently is not out there, we have one choice. My, I would urge this council not to take the vote tonight. Thank Neither you, reject Lord. or accept. If you want to get more information, certainly a, a no, non-profit. You've given us just the barest minimum. We're not, we're not voting on that tonight, Mrs. Yes, Phelps. but you reject that. You reject Mr. Jaworski. So what do you come back to? The no non-profit. Do you have any other, do you have any solutions? I think the way to go is a lease, sir. I think it may not be so perfect, but it's better than loss. your alternative. You're, Thank you. You're Thank guarantee you, a loss. Excuse me, folks, if we could, um, if we could calm down a little bit, please. Uh, yes, Joan. <laughs> Joan Reese Evans, fourteen ninety Bayshore. <laughs> I think we should um, get the professional in here to run this. Sorry, sorry, Joan. We can't hear you. If you um, could speak into the mic. Sorry. Uh, is that better? Yes, yes, better, yes. I think um, that we should, there's nothing better than a professional to run a professional golf course. And I, I think we would be very silly to turn this down at this point in time because we don't seem to have any other viable good options as we've been hearing tonight. The other alternative is because everybody is so heated over this and, and really feels that, um, that they sh everybody is very interested in it. And um, therefore, I think pe perhaps it should be a public vote. Um, everybody, we should have a special election for this vote, perhaps, because I think that would give every opportunity everybody an opportunity to weigh in because this is so contentious. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. Yes, Dan. Dennis Riley, <clears throat> 302 28th Street, Brigantine. 
I just want to kind of ramble a little bit, if I might. Can everybody hear me? No. <laughs> no. Dennis, lift the mic up further. I'm kind of disappointed in the way we've discussed and talked about uh, Ron Jaworski. Not because from Philadelphia and because he was our quarterback in the 1980 <laughs> Super Bowl, but um, anybody can go online, as I did before the meeting tonight, and you can find out what kind of a golf professional he is now, or at least his company anyway. They own the Blue Heron Pines, the River Winds, the Running Deer, and the Valley Brook. I think that's been a question all night. What, what, what exactly is the basis for his expertise? Um, so I think we've kind of resolved that. If you go on, each one of those golf courses has a, uh, a separate uh, internet site. They do everything from weddings uh, on the, on the uh, we had talked about the food and beverage side of it. They do all of that, the weddings, all the things that you would find in a, in a fine golf course in a country, country club type atmosphere. And Ron Jaworski, over the years, has put together this, uh, this, this business enterprise. So I, I don't think, now with regard to auditing and uh, public disclosure and so forth, sometimes you don't need to get to the numbers if you just go to the facility and you look around and you uh, observe the culture and you observe uh, the, um, the execution of, the, uh, of what they're in business to do, which in this case is to run a professional golf course and the associated country club, food and beverage, et cetera. So I'm very comfortable with uh, Ron Jaworski uh, golf as being a candidate for uh, running our golf course. Now, wh why is it important to mention the other four golf courses? Well, first of all, everybody who comes here if in fact uh, Ron Jaworski Golf is running this, is going to know the caliber of, uh, of uh, uh, activity, if you will, the caliber of the golf course. It, they, they, they won't come here. They're going to have Blue Heron Mines, Blue Heron Pines in mind. So when they come here, uh, Ron Jaworski can't be running an operation that doesn't either meet or exceed that standard. That's one point that I want to make. So by definition, if, if this for-profit business is going to come in here and run our golf course, I think he's going to run it. He's going to do what it takes over the first five years, staying with that as a, as the, as a discussion point. He's going to bring that golf course up to that level. Otherwise, what's he going to hear? Oh, I went to Jaworski's course in Brigantine and it really, really disappointed me because this was wrong with it and that was wrong with it and when I went to Blue Heron Pines and that was a great course, he's not going to let that happen. I, I think that's common business sense. A for-profit business is going to create a standard and it's going to want, want to maintain what they call the experience of the Ron Jaworski Golf here in Brigantine. So I, I just want to uh, touch base on that point and uh, why I believe that uh, when J if Jaworski gets the lease, that $300,000, that's going to be spent in those first five years, probably going to be f spent in the first two years to get the golf course into a position where it can start uh, meeting or exceeding the, the golfer experience as you would find it at the other four courses. I'm in favor of going with the lease. Um, First of all, it does shift that risk. Um, we're not in the golf business. I, I, I want this council to, ta to have the council time to concentrate on municipal matters where your expertise lies. That, that's where the time at these council meetings should be spent. We're listening to uh, residents uh, and what their concerns are and what we can do to make the community better. That, that's where our time should be spent. Not, 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 as we're doing tonight, talking about this golf course again and again. So it shifts the risk over to Jaworski for the reasons that I just said before. I think that's a good idea. Um, it places the hands, uh, it places the course in the hands of a professional golf management company. I don't think there's any disputing that. 
It provides for immediate capital improvements for the very reasons that I pointed out before. He's not going to have his name on something that's less than the other uh, four uh, courses that he's, that he's already uh, providing an exceptional experience on for golfers. And it provides a revenue stream in the third and fourth year it, to start to offset um, the, uh, those mortgage costs that we talked about. So we own the golf course. You know, I like to look at it two different, in two different ways. Uh, number one, we have four more years left to pay off. We, we're going to have to do that regardless of what. Excuse me, your five minutes are up. Okay, well, anyway, hopefully I made the point that that's what I'm in favor of and for those are the reasons. And, um, and I do like to look at it from a long-term perspective. If they are as good as we understand that they are and as the evidence proves, then uh, it is a good long-term solution because at the end of four years, they're going to be handling the golf course. We're going to be getting $100,000 a year. It sounds like a good deal to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Tony. Tony Palala for Sunset Court. Um, first, I have a question for Fred. Well, actually, let me make a comment first, uh, then I'll ask the question. Um, back in December, I believe it was, uh, council directed uh, Fred, the city uh, solicitor, to put together a lease agreement which would spell out everything that the city would be looking for in terms of protecting the city based on the proposal that was given by Jaworski. Fred, is that correct? My recall is that the direction was to identify issues that needed to be discussed and then invite Jaworski to discuss them. I did put together a list. Matt communicated with the, the Jaworski organization, and that's when, correct me if I'm wrong, the communication came back that they did not choose to deal with the details until such time as there was some affirmative statement that the municipality was accepting the primary business points. That's what I recall. Okay. All right, so I I I'd, I'd right. So I would be safe in saying, though, Fred, that first of all, I'd be remiss if I didn't state that uh, council as a body was not thrilled with the one proposal that we got out of this long process uh, through the RFP process. Uh, myself, uh, I can speak for myself and also for Councilman Kern and certainly all the other members uh, of council that were here in December will agree that we did not think it was the best offer that we could have, but the question was, is it better than the alternative? Um, and Matt, I want to thank you for coming tonight. You did a great job. Uh, I thought you did an excellent job with the, with the RFP, and, and thank you for coming, because I know that you're coming to these meetings, uh, and you've come to numerous meetings uh, without any additional remuneration on your part. Um, We all know that if we had voted up the Jaworski deal, that that really didn't bind the city to go forward with the deal until we could sit down with Jaworski and make sure that the solicitor put together a lease agreement that was approved by council, that it protected the city, and then at that point we could move forward with that. That obviously hasn't happened, and I guess Jaworski Jaworski figured that if you're not going to vote it up, then what is the sense in, in him, you know, spending more time? So had we done that, I think we could have gotten to the point where we then could have an agreement that council could say, hey, uh, this agreement protects the city. It's not, it's not the best deal, and we all know that. But that didn't happen, so here we are. The problem that I have with the proposal that was put forth by Councilman Simpson is that I think some of these numbers are put here so that you can get to a zero. Uh, I mean, these are all based on assumptions. You're assuming that you can have a operational cost of 825. It's an assumption. 
Un until you get to December 31st of next year, you're not going to know whether you can achieve that. Number two, you're shifting a debt to the taxpayers on the water, which accumulated over five years is $200,000. So these, again, they skew the numbers so that your proposal looks good. And, and the other line items as well. The, the professional fees, the management fee I give you unequivocally, that's done. I don't know that it was the right thing to do from the beginning. Maybe we should have looked at this thing after the first five years. So I'll give you the 90,000 90, in management fees. Um, as far as the, as far as the, oh, and I'm sorry, and the 50,000 in professional fees. Clearly, in two, in, since we did the RFP, there are professional fees that are not annual reoccurring professional fees, and so to, to the extent that we may only incur $20,000 in professional fees annually, but whatever that savings is, it is. But it's certainly stating that we're going to save $155,000 throwing in the other line items is nothing more than an assumption. And I don't know the city council should make a decision based on assumptions. At the end of the day, in 2002, we bought the golf course and we made a lot of assumptions. Some of the assumptions did not come through. So, I think the central theme throughout the night has been everybody wants to protect the taxpayers. How do we minimize the risk for the taxpayers? Certainly that was my goal when I served on council and I served on this committee. Is there a better way to operate the golf course and have less risk for the taxpayers? Excuse one me, of the Tony, other things, one of the other thing, pardon me? Go ahead, five minutes are up. Well, I think Some there's a lot of people this evelling that yeah, just telling you that's my one, job. One, one of the other things, um, Councilman Simpson, is that we keep talking about Jaworski and uh, 300,000 in capital improvements. Um, what happens if we do the nonprofit and the irrigation system, which you this evening said was 1.2 million, one goes million kaput? Whatever, whatever it is. I, I think it could be done for eight or 900,000 okay. based on research that I've done. Right. So if it happens, where's the money coming from? Now, so my point is that we're making assumptions and, and we're not putting anything in for potential hazards. And that certainly is a potential hazard, whether it happens tomorrow, next year, the year after. Uh, the system is 25 years old and, you know, everything has a life, okay? And, and so I'm not here to tell you that the Jaworski deal is the end all, but I don't mm -hmm. know that the not-for-profit is, is the answer either. Because everything we do with a nonprofit, at the end of the day, yes, you set up a nonprofit. And Mr. Cordasco talks about how transparent it is. Well, our golf course utility has been very transparent, so that's not an issue. Although the uh, not for profit in EHT has come under some criticism about being very much less than transparent. <coughs> but that's not the issue. The issue is any catastrophe any system that breaks down, any um, another hurricane, uh, bad weather, all of those things are not factored into the assumptions that you've made. At least with Ron Jaworski, we know that he's going to put a minimum of 300000 in. We are going to get some rent. But I believe that in the interest of the taxpayers, the city shouldn't be in the golf course business. I believe that Ron Jaworski's will create synergies without the community, without the golfing community, and also with the golf courses that he runs. He'll create a synergy that can't be created by a standalone golf course. I think that his marketing prowess, the, the, the way that he markets all of his properties, he doesn't have to spend maybe more than $32,000 in marketing and can get $100,000 worth of marketing. So the question really is, what is in the best interest of the taxpayers? And, and I think that we really have to analyze that. Now, I personally believe that Ron Jaworski, be, because of his star power, because of the fact that he'll own a, a fourth or fifth um, uh, course, all of these things, I think, have to be looked at. They, they have to really be thought out. And again, from what I'm hearing from everybody, whether it's this side of the aisle or this side of the aisle, 
this side of council or that side of council, we're all stating unequivocally the same thing. How do we reduce the risk to the taxpayers? And, and I think that the Jaworski deal should certainly have a better look. I think that, and, and you know, we all know that there's the rumor mill. And I think Jaworski, since we now have a Republican majority, has heard through the grapevine that, you know, maybe they're going to go a different route. And I don't want to speak for Jaworski because I haven't spoken to Jaworski. But I think it may be prudent to have Fred sit down with Jaworski, see if he can hammer out some sort of a deal, show it to council, see if it makes sense. If it makes sense, you go for it. If it doesn't make sense, you go in a different direction. Um, I'm not here to put down a nonprofit, but, but you know, what is presented here are, are strictly based on assumptions, and you're not taking you're not taking any precautions or setting anything aside for potential hazards, for potential um, catastrophes, another Sandy, just bad weather. Look, look, at, look at the way we've started off this year with this weather. And nobody here, because it's all in print, the golf course is in a decline. Yes, it may have made $90,000 more in 2014, and, and by all accounts, by Councilman Simpson, the mayor, um, the owner of the Brigantine Times, the course was in fabulous shape, and I'm not going to dispute that. So let's assume that the course was in great shape. You've, you've heard um, Matt Galvin say that 2014 was a pretty good year weather-wise, correct, Matt? So if you take all of those things into account, and you go from 2013, the year of Sandy, when the course was closed for five, six months, and you only average $90,000 more in 2014, what does it tell you? A standalone municipal golf course is, isn't bucking the trend. The trend is that golf is on a downward decline. And if you, if you compare it to 2012, and, and we had part of Sandy in 2012, it's down $200,000. So I, I, I think it's in the best interest of the public, to the taxpayers, that you make an attempt, I mean, we've gone this far to, to maybe go for one more meeting, sit down with the Jaworskis, if it's a deal that, you know, and council has it, and then you vote it up or you vote it down. So, there are my comments, that's what I wanted to, to say. I don't think I forgot anything, except I have one question for uh, Leon. Uh, with regard to the golf course utility, we made the, and I couldn't hear real well, so we made the principal payment that was due. Uh, I know that we had $202,000 left in the, um, in the fund balance. Yes. So where did the rest of the money come from? Because I know that the golf course didn't operate, uh, uh, you know, didn't uh, produce a profit. Yeah, r right now, just like it is every year in January, the mon money is loaned from the current fund, which the golf course will pay back once it starts Okay, operating. so, okay. All right, so. And I think we all know that, and uh, Ed, you, you would know this because you prepared the budget, that uh, the golf course basically uh, is in a deficit of 300, and if you could help me, I've seen the number, but I don't remember, 340 some thousand. So if you take the 202, there's a negative of uh, 238,000. That is gonna probably have to come out of the general fund unless we borrow some money. Would, would that be a, a fair statement? They will, there will be an amount to be raised in the current fund if everything stays exactly the way it is right now. Okay, so, uh, so again, you know, we talk about, Councilman Simpson, you talk about this million dollars that we're gonna lose. Well, between 2013 and 2014, the, the taxpayers are basically on the hook for a million dollars. And I'm not, not here to beat that horse. <laughs> what I'm saying is, okay, how can we minimize the, talk, the cost to the taxpayers going out 15 years. And, and I think that, you know, if we can cut a deal and know that we've got a quality operator who's going to put some minimums in, in the improvements, and we know that he's going to be on the hook, because Andy, you know and I know that he's going to have to make guarantees, and, you know, again, we have to put together a lease agreement that protects the city, the council can review, and then everybody can make a, a decision on. So, you know, they're my comments. I appreciate uh, the extra time, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Any other public comment on the golf course? <laughs> Everyone's had enough of the golf course. 
Is that the uh, Councilman Kerr calling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> um, okay, this time um, I'm going to close the, uh, the public portion. Um, any uh, final discussion by council members? Do you have a comment on the golf course, sir? No. Yeah, we're on the golf course right now. We'll, we'll have another public portion if we can get to it before midnight. Because uh, we close at midnight. Okay, any... Uh, I'd just like to say that we, it sounds like we have tried numerous times to get in touch with Jaworski group and get them to come and answer these questions and I don't see where we have failed in making attempts to get them to answer questions for us. I have a few comments. Um, you know, I've been on the council here a little over two years and we have a deal on the table. The deal is still on the table. We have an offer from Ron Jaworski to lease our golf course. And I don't see another opportunity like this coming along. Uh, and I think that if we don't move forward with at least negotiating and talking further and giving and accept, accepting this proposal, we won't know. We would never know. Non for profit is not working in Egg Harbor Township. It's a poster child for for not starting a non for profit. When I look at the alternative, it, it's not a solution. The alternative of non for profit here is not a solution. You can't guarantee the revenue. You can't guarantee you're re going to reduce costs every year. You're borrowing money to pay money. It's just more burden on the taxpayers. We have a deal. We, have, we can bring Ron Jaworski in. We're going to have a new, a new name, a new brand. It will attract people here. It will be good for the overall economy of this island. We have to give it a try. If it doesn't work, just because we're, we're accepting a proposal doesn't mean you're binded by a contract. Is that true? If you accept the proposal? Tonight. Tonight. If you accept the proposal, the, the negotiation is going to follow. Any, any lease that you actually are going to enter into would require a separate council action. <laughs> right. Would we be um, bound into the numbers, the financial offer that was given to us? Like, are we bound to that? If you, if you approve this resolution, that is what you are binding yourself to. Okay. Now, that is not to say that during the course of negotiations, sometimes things may change, but you are, you are sending an upfront signal that, yes, you are okay with the primary business points as they are presented. Yes. Thank you. And, and let's be honest, the irrigation system, I mean, if the thing is shot and it's, it's old and it's going to go, and, and, and you have someone leasing the golf course and, and knowing that it's old and shot and it's going to go, I mean, part of the responsibility should be on the city to contribute to fix the irrigation system because we're leasing it with an irrigation system that's ready to fall apart. This is what I'm, I'm hearing, and I don't know if that's true. But we have an offer, and I think it will be foolish to reject it and, and move forward and, and talk further. Uh, otherwise, at year after year, we're just going to keep subsidizing this golf course. And, and again, I don't agree. I don't think city government should be in the business of golf. Not uh, at all. I, 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 th I think that the best thing for us to do is to step back from the edge a little bit. Um, and by voting for the Jaworski proposal that we have tonight, we bring it another step, and it also has, gives us time to, at, and at the same time, in parallel, get more information, more details regarding the not-for-profit, and get more details from Jaworski so we know what we're dealing with. Um, so I, uh, what I want to do is vote it up, yes for it, so that we can move both issues forward and we don't close the door on any possibility. In that, in that same vein, I think our solicitors made it clear that we can vote for a resolution which would basically say we 
accept the deal terms subject to us now being able to negotiate a lease which is satisfactory. And if we don't reach that point of ever negotiating a satisfactory lease, we are bound to nothing. Also, as our solicitor points out, even agreeing to the financial terms for purposes of moving it forward doesn't mean that they have to be the financial terms in the end. It's certainly open to negotiating further on that. Well, I, I don't know if the solicitor I'm not, said that. I'm not done yet. Well, I, I, I'd the, like to hear from the solicitor because you're putting right, words well, in his mouth. Well, we can hear from him when I'm done. The Jaworski organization is a credible organization. Yeah, some comments were made by some of the speakers here tonight which, to be charitable, were uninformed. The reality of the way Jaworski organization operates their golf courses, by all objective and credible evidence, is they are good operators. They are financially responsible. They've acted in good faith as evidenced by the fact that their deposit is still with us. They have not backed out of anything. We have left them hanging as much or more than they have left us hanging because it's been a good almost four months that we've been sitting on this. So there is no downside to going forward, as Councilman Picardi suggested, and the alternative to vote it down means no matter how we want to spin it, we have committed ourselves to the not-for-profit, an idea about which I personally have very serious misgivings, but which as a starting point, we really don't know much about because we've only had a couple of days to look at some limited financials, the back the backup to which we don't have the opportunity to evaluate the assumptions that are key to that proposal. We have not had and we have nothing at all about what would be the structure of the not for profit, how would it be staffed? And important questions like what would be the process for the not for profit? to do things like make capital improvements. The proposal we have, and I'm going to assume just as a Jaworski proposal can be changed or improved, possibly, I'm not going to assume that's the final final because if it is, then I'm, I'm really puzzled by the fact that we've spent so much time talking about the lack of detail in the 300,000 which Jaworski's committed in the first five years to capital improvements whereas the not-for-profit proposal proposes no spending on capital improvements at all in the first five years. So I think we need a lot more information on both sides of it, and I think it would be reckless in the extreme to vote down the Jaworski proposal, particularly if the reason for doing that is uh, what I think is a very misguided sense that Jaworski has not been responsive to us. That would be a very thin reason for us to basically force on the taxpayers a, an alternative system which may be extremely dangerous for us financially. The, and Rick, I, for clarification, I think what you asked Mr. Cerny was, can you agree to the financial terms that are in a proposal, but then when you negotiate the contract, change the financial terms that you agreed to in public in a proposal? Okay, let, with the mayor and council's permission, let me say it the way that, that I perceive it. And I hope this is helpful, and in some ways I may be repeating what I said a few moments ago. The passage of this res resolution is acceptance by the municipality of the primary business terms that are contained in the most recent proposal from the Jaworski organization. That is what it is. That's what that resolution does. That would then be followed by a period of good faith negotiations to establish the actual lease. In, I'm not being disrespectful, but I am, I am stressing the good faith aspect of it. Uh, I do not want to be in a situation where we pass a resolution accepting the business terms simply so we can buy time to look at other alternatives. If we accept the business terms, we enter into good faith negotiations. As a practical matter, within the arena of negotiations, you may or may not be successful in getting to the goal of establishing that lease. If not, then it doesn't go forward. If so, then it comes back to this council for a further vote on the lease itself. As to the primary business terms, sometimes, again, within the parameters of negotiation, things change. It may be that we offer su such wonderful lease terms that we would be able to get something else on the business terms. 
That is speculative. It is, it is a dynamic within negotiations, and I believe, I hope that's what I said before, but if I didn't mm -hmm. say that before, that is what I intend to say, and I believe that that's a correct analysis. Let me, ask, uh, let me ask another question. If we reject this proposal, because this was given to us as the best and final offer, does that preclude Mr. Jaworski coming back with another proposal if he still is interested in the Brigantine Golf Links? I believe a rejection of this terminates the RFP process and the process that we have been in. That is not to say that a willing lessor and a willing lessee who now know one another cannot enter into an, another agreement. But in terms of the formal process in which you have engaged, uh, and the fact that this was presented to this municipality as, as, a, as a final offer, I believe the rejection of that terminates the formal process. So, uh, so to move forward, as the mayor is suggesting we might be able to do if this voted down, would need another RFP process? No, I, th I mean, you, 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 you folks now know one another. Right. And it's okay. not to say that there could not be an in informal communication which then mm -hmm. triggers the negotiation of another deal. I would have to look at where that falls in terms of the statutory requirements of the RFPs and things like that, but that's my problem. Uh, but it, would ha it, it could result in that kind of informal communication but the formal process would be over, in my opinion. I think Matt has a thought. Uh, one thought, and I'm not conversant on bidding le legalities, but my understanding is when the Jaworski submitted subsequent revisions to their proposal, I don't know if I, I'd have to go back and double check. I don't think they withdrew the earlier ones. I think mm -hmm. it was an, another option. So I don't know if you want a Chinese menu or anything, or, or, or you know, you might want to go back and look at the 24-year one, go back to the mm -hmm. last one. I don't, I don't think they substituted one and took one off the table. It was just an addition to. Mm -hmm. well, Ms. Burns, yeah, we're Ms. not Burns. in the public portion. Yeah, no, 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 don't worry about it. Uh, Ms. Don't Burns, worry about it. Mr. Burns. Yeah. Mr. Burns. Yeah. Burns. Th we, let it, we, we might get mm -hmm. to uh, a vote here tonight. But, Mr. No, Burns. Mr. Burns, Mr. please. Burns. I've heard things like, I've heard things tonight like this is not a great deal, there's not enough information, we can't make decisions on assumptions. We've also heard that this is their best and final offer. I don't think that this is acceptable. This is not enough for us to jump into this. If they want to come back and renegotiate, so be it. I, I agree with Karen. Um, our obligation is to the taxpayers, it's not to the golf course, it's not to how pretty the golf course is or whatever. And again, it doesn't matter to me who runs the golf course. It's my obligation to the taxpayers. And if we're going to lose one million plus guaranteed, we have to look at other options. You know, if we don't want to go with the, the nonprofit or, or there's anything else, I mean, I'll, I'll reach out to Rick, Joe, and, and Lisa, if, if they have some other ideas, uh, and it's nothing against Mr. Jaworski, please, uh, you know, if I overstep my boundaries uh, with Mr. Jaworski, and I apologize. I think he runs an uh, excellent course. Um, I just don't think our financials are, are good enough to accept this. Um, so I'm making a motion to deny the proposal of Ron Jaworski. Wait, no. Say, no. What? It, when we get, the mayor, if I can, when we get to the point of a motion, it would be cleaner if the motion is made in the affirmative. Oh. Okay, so the, the motion then you're making is to accept <coughs> Mr. Jaworski's offer? Yes. Okay. All right, we've had a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Okay. The motion is to accept the offer as proposed uh, by Ron Jaworski Goff, December 9th, 2014. Do we have a roll call, please? Few? No. McClay? Yes. 
Picardi. I think that this is the only way to reduce or eliminate the risk. I think it's the best deal for the city. Uh, I vote yes. Jalukri? As I've stated a number of times, as I explained tonight and in the handout which I prepared, the not-for-profit option, which I hesitate to even call an option because of the almost complete lack of information that we were given, is not an option. It's an illusion. It's an illusion which serves purposes that have nothing to do with the interests of the taxpayers of Brigantine. It's assuming revenues and assuming cost cuts which are absolutely made up. It is providing zero, zero dollars of guaranteed capital improvements for the life of the not-for-profit. It is not guaranteeing any return at all to the city, where the Jaworski proposal does. Many, many, many times tonight we've heard the number one million, whatever the change is, that's going to be paid to our debt service. That's an illusion. 700,000 of that is borrowed money. The balance of it depends on the golf course under the guidance of a not-for-profit entity, which, by the way, runs no other golf courses, has no capital of its own, has no marketing expertise or organization. Every single assumption depends on that not-for-profit being able to generate enough positive cash flow over the upcoming years. And make no mistake, it's not limited to a five-year window. This not-for-profit is the future. It's the indefinite future. And if you think that in two years or three years you're going to be able to go out for another RFP, you're kidding yourself. Every indicator in the industry is that golf revenues are in a decline. Golf is in a decline. This is absolutely the worst possible time for us to get bold and decide, hey, let's take a shot. I think we can make this work based on absolutely made-up assumptions, zero guaranteed capital improvements, and no guarantee whatsoever that there will be enough money to do those capital improvements in the future, much less pay back the 700000 that we're borrowing now so that we can put on the big phony show of saying, hey, we made the taxpayers whole. The taxpayers are not being made whole. The taxpayers are being put further in the hole. This is the not-for-profit is now the only option left to you. The Jaworski proposal, and I spell it out, Look at the numbers, and if you disagree with my numbers, that's fine, but the numbers are solid. Jaworski's numbers were real. Jaworski's numbers would generate positive cash flow to us. The not-for-profit just absolutely leaves us wide open to who knows what the future will hold. But I know one thing it doesn't do. It doesn't guarantee you anything. So absolutely yes for the Jaworski proposal. This vote tonight, assuming it goes down 4 to 3, is no surprise at all. And I just want people to remember all the, all the optimistic rainbow and sunshine lollipop talk that you heard tonight about the not-for-profit. It is an illusion. Sarah? Look at the resolution that stands before me today. I don't think there's any question about Mr. Jaworski's capabilities, but the financial offer that's being made to the city does not meet our needs. So I'm voting no. Simpson? Last two years, we have done nothing with the city of Brigantine. Previous administration has done nothing. We are moving forward. We're bringing Brigantine forward. So, on that on that basis, and it does a lot for the taxpayers of Brigantine. So I'm voting no. The uh, vote tonight is on the resolution uh, that is before us, and that is um, based on the offer that has been made by Ron Jaworski Golf. And the financial package uh, that we have been presented along with um, the uh, lease terms uh, that are articulated in this particular document, uh, which is an initial five-year lease and a uh, extensions year 6, 10, and 11 through 15 at the discretion of, uh, of Ron Jaworski Golf. I believe that the financial package that has been offered is not in the best interest of the taxpayers of Brigantine and that um, the 
overall cost, especially in the next two years where there is no revenue coming in from Jaworski Golf, will be felt uh, very, very, um, in very difficult ways by the taxpayers of Brigantine as we try and develop budgets over the next two years. This is no reflection on uh, Jaworski Golf. It is a business proposal that they've put in. And um, I think all of us uh, recognize uh, the quality of the individual, Ron Jaworski, and uh, what he has done um, both in his athletic career and promoting uh, the uh, city of Philadelphia, the Eagles, and now his golf courses, and recognize um, certainly there is value in that, that um, profile that he has. However, we can't offset uh, the cost of the city of Brigantine right now based on the proposal that we have. However, if something were to come back to this council from uh, Jaworski Golf, and we would entertain, I'm sure, um, a, a new proposal that has better financial terms. The resolution tonight is not about the nonprofit. The nonprofit was shown as an example about what can be done, and certainly, if a nonprofit is to be formed in the future, it will come before this council and it will be formed by an ordinance at a public hearing, and then this council would have the right to vote in the affirmative if they want to approve that or some other configuration. But by default, if we continue to do nothing with this, we will continue to operate using the same model we have right now, which is to pay a management company, which is to incur the fixed costs that we know are there. We have to do something. So we can't just spend uh, so much time and have paralysis by analysis on some of these things that we should have been able to find out if we had discussions with Jaworski Goff in a timely manner. We have not. And it has not been because we haven't attempted to do that. We have. But at this point, my vote is on this proposal. It's not a reflection on the quality of Jaworski Goff. So I'm voting no. Motion defeated. Matt and uh, Leon, I, I would imagine you uh, you may want to start driving back to where Chief is. The uh, snow started yet? Not yet. You've I will. been here, right? If, uh, Mayor, if I can mention. Uh, Mayor, w if, if I can mention, I want to point out that. Uh, in it Folks, if I could ask, if, if you're leaving the council chamber, um, you can do so quietly because we're, we're still trying to move through uh, the rest of our agenda. I just wanted to mention before I left that uh, you know, my professional opinion from visiting hundreds of courses and, and investing in many that uh, Nathan and Tom and the crew there do an absolutely fantastic job with very limited resources and with virtually no corporate support. They've been really doing it on their own for a while now and, and, and uh, they need certainty. They need to know what their game plan is and so at least this brings that certainty to them but they're doing a fantastic job with very in trying times of limited resources. And Matt, Matt if, if, you, oh, excuse me, uh, if you don't mind, maybe reach out to Mr. Dworsky, the organization, as oh, maybe tomorrow, know. and if you be willing to sit down again. Uh, we'll, we'll de you know, it's just the financial aspect of this. Maybe we can tweak it, and uh, we'll get, you know, before we move on to something else. So I could try to exhaust all opportunities with Mr. Dworsky. Uh, as again, it's no reflection on his operation or, or his personality. Or I definitely will, and uh, you know, it's not a compelling option to not make certain Right, right. <clears throat> I wish it had. Mr. Galvin, thank yeah. you very much and for your time. You, I appreciate it. it. Thanks, Leah. Mr. Costello, thank, thank you. Matt. Maybe we can get through this. Yeah. Okay, move it along. Okay. Sit um, down, Fred. <laughs> We move now to uh, <coughs> ordinance number two of 2015, an introduction amending the salary ordinance. We have a motion and a second, please. So, so moved. moved. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, um, I'm going to vote yes, of course, to move this forward to a final vote, but. Following up on our, our discussion uh, in the executive session, 
Ed, I'd, I'd like to see some more information about comparable salary ranges for some of these positions in other towns. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, could I have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClellan? Yes. Yes. McCarty? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Next, we move to ordinance number three, um, an introduction, amending and uh, supplementing article seven of the code entitled sale of ice cream on the beaches. We have a motion and a second, please. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, this uh, ordinance would allow for uh, the sale of ice cream on the beaches by veterans um, and uh, their would be um, 20 licenses uh, that would be made available um, in the amount of $100 per license. First, uh, 20 veterans who sign up would be uh, the ones who would be eligible, and the range of uh, the ice cream uh, sale on the beach would be from A Street South uh, through, I guess, the Cove uh, on the south end. Any further discussion, Ed? Or any any other details or okay, any discussion by council? Yeah, no, I have a question. I, I, I believe earlier we were asked if we could clarify what veterans would need to do in order to get those licenses. So could we explain that now? Yeah, what kind of proof? I guess that I, I believe it's the, it's the identification from the county. County veterans mm -hmm. identification card. That's correct. And uh, but there there are other w ways they can that can be documented too. No, or do they have to have the county? Because the um, the state um, board of veterans affairs, as well, identifies veterans. So my understanding of the discussion was the county. Um, I mean, certainly, we can we can have that open to county mm -hmm. or state veterans card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the issue is that you know is there's proof that this person is a bona fide veteran, then that settles it so that we don't make anybody jump through a hurdle in case they don't have a county um, certification. The, the Board of Veterans Affairs really is, you know, if you can say they get excited about anything. They're excited about this. They think it's a great idea. And they said that they would uh, help to disseminate the information so we can contact them when, when this moves and, um, you know, they'll help us as well. Um. I think the version that we have in our packet uh, refers specifically to just the, mm -hmm. the county licensure or, or certification. Um, but I think we can, we can go forward on first reading. And then if there's something we need to add to that to clarify that there's you know, a, an alternative or a comparable way for someone to verify their veteran status, I think we can add that on second reading. OK, any further discussion? Seeing none, can we have roll call, please? Few? Yes. McClay? Yes. McCarty? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, ordinance number four of 2015 is an introduction amending chapter 210-37, article two of the Code of the City of Brigantine as it relates to mercantile licenses. We have a motion and second, please. So, so moved. moved. Second. And this um, sets the mercantile fee at $100 for the ice cream vendor license for the veterans. Okay. Okay. Any uh, further discussion by roll. council? Roll call. Seeing none, can we have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClay? Yes. McCarty? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Okay, we move the resolution 2015-49, authorizing the execution and delivery of loan agreements to be executed by the city and each of the New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Trust and State of New Jersey, acting by through the DEP and further authorizing the execution and delivery of an escrow agreement, all pursuant to the 2015 New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Trust financing program for the replacement of well number four. We have a motion and a second, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Ed, <laughs> this is a lot of verbiage for. Thank you, Mayor. You did that in one breath. Two yes. resolutions have to do with the same thing. It's part of our uh, New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Trust application to replace well number four with well number nine. Uh, we were approved for financing through the NJEIT program. 
Uh, it is a portion grant, the rest low interest. Uh, this simply moves us towards the permanent, towards that financing through the NJEIT program. The 1.9 million. Okay. Could uh, we have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClay? Yes. McCarty? Yes. Delucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution 2015 50 is the, um, I guess, the resolution that authorizes the $1.9 million dollars in bond series 2015 through the New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Program. Could motion a second, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ed, anything else? We Same, Same thing as... Okay, can we have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClay? Yes. Bacardi? Yes. Delucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Resolution 2015-51 uh, is um, issuance of a duplicate, duplicate tax sale certificate. We have a motion and second, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, can we have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClay? Yes. Bacardi? Yes. Delucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution is uh, resolution 2015-52 is uh, approval to apply for the tonnage grant. Okay, motion and second, please. So moved. Second. John, uh, you want to talk about the tonnage grant? Not really. <laughs> I'll make it real brief. We're trying to get our recycling up this year with uh, our new city manager. We're uh, going to be pushing a lot of recycling in the uh, all public buildings. So let's recycle. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Could we have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClay? Yes. Picardi? Yes. Delucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Move to our consent agenda, raffle license uh, number 732 of the Brigantine Elks and 733 for the Brigantine Elks, the Surf and Land Fishing Club Tournament Request. <coughs> Excuse me, could we have a motion and second, please? I'll make that motion. Second. Could we have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClay? Yes. McCarty? Yes. Delucre? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next we move to uh, the Manager Council Committee Discussions. Um, not on, on the agenda, but I think the uh, Fred, uh, Fred's office has done a draft of the um, Economic Development slash Special Events Committee uh, uh, ordinance. I don't know if everyone's received that draft. It was, it was emailed out to everyone, Mayor. If, if any member of council does not have it, call me up or email me. I'll send it back out to you. Mm -hmm. uh, tentatively, we'll, we'll schedule it for uh, introduction at the March 18th meeting. <laughs> Great. And uh, next we have uh, appointment of uh, oh, board of school me. estimates. Just, ju just on that, um, what I'd, I don't know the best way to go about this, but if we can, when we look at the setting up the actual board, if we can set it up so we get some input from Stockton, from their, their business section and maybe their economic development uh, group over there. Well, you know, there are a number of resources. Um, Joe, that are available, and certainly Stockton is a mm -hmm. great resource. They're the Economic Development Authority, uh, the Business Center through Rutgers. So I don't know if we want to be specific about them, but well, we no, can but certainly uh, say they'll reach out and well, coordinate. What I think I'd actually like something of that nature is in there. For but something t where it says specifically, you know, we want um, input from an academic entity. Okay. You yeah, will seek input from academic. Uh, Institutions yeah, whether and it's whether it's economic Rutgers. development authorities because mm -hmm. they're out there. Um, next, we need to uh, make some appointments for the board of school estimates. Um, mm -hmm. Lisa has volunteered to do it again, along with uh, Deputy Mayor Simpson, and I have to sit on it. So, if everyone is in favor of that, we need a uh, motion and a second to uh, approve the board of school estimates. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. 
Could we have roll call, please? You? Yes. McClay? Yes. McCarty? Yes. Delucri? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Bear Gunther? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next um, we move to the public comment portion of the meeting. So anyone who would like to address council on any issue, um, please use the microphone and bear in mind, believe it or not, we do have a five minute limit. All right, so if you would uh, come up and, and use the, the mic if you have any comments on any issues. Uh, except for the golf course. Except for the golf course, yes. <laughs> John. John Livesey, 203 Nice Street North, um, in reference to the Shark Park. Um, got a flyer here. It's, uh, we're looking for volunteers for our work week. Uh, the main project is going to occur on Monday, April 27th through Sunday, May 3rd. Uh, we need people to help with child care, uh, for food prep, and for labor. All kinds of uh, skilled with tools or not skilled, we could use you. Um, I have a phone number here, 609-264-0406. Um, we need tools, all kinds of work tools. Um, power drills, saws, routers, hammers, screwdrivers, wheelbarrows, saw horses, work tables, rakes, shovels, and extension cords. We're also accepting uh, lumber donations to make whatever we don't get donated. And um, I'll leave this here, and I'm sure it'll be out on our website also Great. and Facebook. Just a detail on that. On routers, do you know what? I'm sorry? If, on the routers, if you could n mention in there what bits we need. They don't say anything about okay. the bits. And how is the food prep going to be handled? Um, it's saying um, when, when we're going to have the the big days worth of labor, we're going to have people there for food to no, help. I mean, are people going to donate, you know, like a closed dick, you know, covered dish thing, or are we going to go someplace and prepare the food and bring it? That are, all we have down here is uh, prep, serve, and clean up. Okay. I got to find the actual food itself, mm -hmm. maybe provided, but yeah. I'll have to talk to Paul okay. about that. And you want quarter inch routers? We're Sounds looking true. for yeah. donations for food, basically. Okay. Yes, and we will provide the router bits. Uh, we're looking for the router itself. I have a, I have a, um, a commercial grade router. So and what it's, we'll do is it's we're yours. Num we'll number um, all the tools that are donated mm -hmm. so that everybody gets them back. back. Yeah. And just real quick, we are closing Shark Park March 30th, okay. where it will be officially closed. We're going to start uh, construction, destruction that, that day. Thank you, John. So again, this week, it, it's going to be Monday, April 27th through Sunday, May 3rd. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, John. J John, I can just bring the router <coughs> up to you. I can bring the router up to the office. Frank C.O.C., 33 Hield Road. Um, I was watching it on uh, TV to see all this conversation about the golf course. When we have a tremendous need for housing, we have a tremendous amount of work being done here for people to just get back in their homes and to be talking about a golf course to me isn't taking care of Brigantine. I wanted to ask what happened to the permits if we're still being, if I'm fine, I'm a survivor, thanks to the committee here, thanks for that young lady there, our clerk, and I'm doing very well. It was nine months before I got back in my house this time. But regarding the permits, I have some friends, family, and other people. Are the permits being uh, charged for as of January? I'm hearing that rumor, and I just heard that, and I'm wondering if that's happening. Because we have a lot of people that are still having their homes redone. And are we, are they getting charged for the permits? Ed, do you want to? Any new construction permit submitted after the first is being charged for the permit fees. However, most of the people who were, uh, actually everyone who was declared substantially damaged because of that process, they submitted their, essentially their first building application in order to get that substantial damage declaration and therefore they have been uh, submitted prior to January 1st and the repair including the lift is the fee is is still waived it's it's new applications that are submitted after January 1st 
Ed, have you heard in, in this part of the question, I think, people who are use, receiving REM but um, may not have had a substantial damage letter? So my understanding is, is REM has loosened the requirements, the eligibility requirements, so that, that is possible. Although, uh, even if you did not receive the letter, if you submitted, if you applied essentially for that determination and were found uh, that you were not, your application still has the date of when you submitted. So it would really be Small. only those who are submitting now after January 1st. And, and to date, this, but I, from, from Rich Stevens, roughly a month and a half ago, I asked for you know, just the numbers. And um, about $550,000 were waived in, in house raising uh, and from $2,000 per permit for new construction of houses that were demolished because they were damaged. Mm -hmm. uh, that totals about 160,000. So to date there's been in the neighborhood of um, $720,000 plus or minus that have been waived. And I did meet with the DCA and uh, they were very surprised that we were still uh, as of last year up until the December 31st that we were still waiving those fees uh, and stated that we were the only municipality that did that beyond a year. So mm -hmm. we, we went an extra year uh, and, I, and I think that was, that was great because the REM program really started mm -hmm. gaining traction. With, 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 the, with the loosening up of requirements, though, it, they're just brought, uh, including more people who originally applied, correct? So everybody who originally applied, now they're throwing a, a, a bigger net. People can't apply if they've never applied before. That, that's correct. So there, there's right. no new application for the REM so, program. So all these people would be covered then? <coughs> Excuse me? Uh, it, it sounds like everyone that you're, you're speaking about Joe, is covered, it no? It depends because I'm, I'm hearing of individuals who may not have had the okay. level of damage that rose to a substantial damage claim, but the REM has come back to them and said, That's right. but you're eligible based on what we have right now. Right, but they had to have had applied. They did back apply, then. but they right. may not have. But, right. but as they I started the process, the they may have come up short. Yeah, so the, app I mean, the application is in there, right. so these people are covered by what we're doing already. We don't have to expand anything, no, do we? No, sir. The, they, they may not have an application. That's, that's right. So, yeah. so uh, we're no, talking they, two different applications. Right. So the, the application to the state for the REM uh, funding, <coughs> that is closed has been closed for right. several for two years and um, you must have made that yeah, application right. to be eligible for this additional funding um, what what I was saying though is anyone who has that who requested the letter of substantial damage in order to do that they actually opened up a building permit mm -hmm. and right. therefore they are in covered. before the deadline Mm -hmm. Anybody that now may have submit may have applied for the REM and was not funded until right now, and if they did not come in to the to the building department before December 31st for a for a substantial uh -huh. damage determination or a building permit, they're not then, covered. Then they are after the deadline, and they will be assessed the the permit fees. So maybe we should go back and see. Um, you know, how we in include these folks because we, nobody knew before that the, the net was going to be cast wider so that some people aren't left out in the cold with this. We, I guess we have to revisit it again, correct? It, it, I well, think it certainly counsels discretion. We, we could probably try and get some numbers through DCA if we could see what the universe is now of. Uh, of how many people we're talking about because I think some of them are just finding out now recently correct that they've been approved mm. we had so, a phone call today yeah we had originally filled out the paperwork we didn't have enough damage and they're calling and, and now saying, they're saying yes you can apply yeah but yeah. but it, 
But Ed is saying that some people can apply now who never applied before. No, no you, you can't. can't. Apply for REM. So, but REM so then, if anybody has applied, then they're covered by what we've set. No, I'm sorry. Again, two two different. When we say apply, there's two different applications. One is to the REM. Apply to REM. Well, that's what I'm talking one about. One is apply to the city of Bergen. No, I'm Keep. talking about. So everyone who applied to the REM, that that's separate from people who have applied to us. Correct, but if they if they did not apply to the for a building permit prior to December 31st, then they are going to be charged right. the the build the construction fees. So what we have to do if we want to move in that direction, we have to say basically anyone who has applied to the REM will be eligible for the the discounted or anybody the, who is is receiving funding. Right. To from elevate their house. For, so we do have to revisit that, I guess. Yeah, there's still people that are applying to REM and getting uh, elevation certificates. Right. Without an elevation certificate, the engineer, no one will tell you how much you have to raise your house. Therefore, you can't get a price to raise your house. Mm. And once you get the price, and then all of a sudden you've got a, a um, $35,000 number mm -hmm. just for block work. Well, there's a permit for that. Right. So these people are just running into this now. There's some people that haven't been to their home since the storm. And I'm seeing it on my street. And I'm seeing with the different people that are having their homes lifted he just questioned a $300 permit uh, that he had to pay and arguing over it because sometimes the contractor didn't put the permits in. And I know that more than anyone else. They didn't put the permit in. So therefore, if they didn't put it, the permit in in time, mm -hmm. therefore, they're going to be charged because it wasn't in by January 1st. So I just wanted to, in listening to all this about the golf course, and I live on the golf course, um, it just, I, I think we're forgetting that people are trying to still get in their homes and still trying to be, you know, go, going through this. And I personally, about the golf course, is the golf course on the market? Is it, on is it the for market? sale? No, we no, can't sell. We can't sell. Okay, what? Why are we? Why going back there? Why is just? Are you just dealing with one personality? Because that's the only proposal we received. Does anyone else know that they can come in here well, they and put it, purchase? Well, yeah, they put out an RFP. Only had uh, two respondents. One wasn't um, in line with what the RFP was. So it wasn't five five hundred RFPs went out. Eight people responded and two put in actual bids. One wasn't a bid that satisfied the requirements of the RFP. So we essentially getting, just had one person. Yeah. Manager, but getting back to, to um, the REM, uh, Ed Stinson and I are working right now with DCA to have them come back and do another seminar. Looks like it'll probably be March 25th. Oh, that's great. At the community center. So they, they will come back down again do the same thing they've done with um, working with individuals. That seemed to be the best. Um, so we're working on putting that together right now. So well, we'll again, try I try to do what we need to do so they'll have the information by the time the 25th comes. Or maybe at the next council meeting? Maybe well, uh, hopefully we'll call up there and I'll, I'll try and through our sources at the DCA, see if we can get a number of how many people they think are going to, from Brigantine, maybe approved in this last round. So we kind of have a universe of where mm -hmm. we're going. Now, the, the, the REM program does fund the building permits, the fees for the building permits oh. is an eligible reimbursable cost through that program. The issue is many, many times the, the cost to lift uh, is so high. You know, it, it's, it exceeds the, the funding limit, but, but it is an eligible cost through the REM program uh, for the permits. But it's still within the one single grant they get. That's correct. Right. So actually if, if the cost of raising is equal to or greater than the than the rim then people are stuck with it oh yes yeah. right
But it, the interesting thing too, and uh, I haven't seen one yet where they've had money left over. Right. Uh, so it's the Doesn't other happen. thing that's happened is the um, through the different iterations of this is to allow um, people to go Plan B or Pathway B, mm -hmm. so that they're using their own contractors now, which has I, I've seen some significant differences in price. Mm. You know, between the state, yes. Right. So yes, that's happening hopefully on the 25th. Okay. <coughs> All right, well that's... You want to end with a song? Um, <laughs> 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 I just, I, I just want to thank everyone from Brigantine Strong because they did, they did quite a bit for me and a lot of other people in town. And uh, hopefully whoever's listening to this on TV hears this and you guys did a great job in helping us out. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for staying so long, too. <laughs> along, along that, just briefly, along that same note, there are a lot of people who are in line to have their homes raised and are having difficulty finding a place to rent. Mm. I don't yep. know whether we have a list. Lynn, is there a list? I've had there was. several people approach me that they're looking for a place to rent for the three or four months that it's taking them. We didn't get into the rental aspect of it just because there was so many legalities with it. Um, I know people are having problems yeah. now because it's not, they're not going to be done in time and they're in rentals and they're going to have to get out for the mm -hmm. summer and it's, it's going to be a big issue. Or they're, they're starting to raise April 1st and they still haven't yeah. found a place. Well, a, lot a lot of people, people had to go their house yeah. in January and now they've just been sitting there because of the weather. Right. Right. So that's another month or so that they're yeah. going to be out of their house. So. State offices are open late. Okay, uh, John, you have to correct the phone number? Yeah, I have a correction on that phone number I gave you earlier. I originally gave you a 609-264. It's 609-442-0406. Zero 07? Okay. 06. 06 or 07? 06. 609-442-0406. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you, John. Mr. Pucci. John Pucci, 100 Sheridan Square. Is there any information on the Municipal Clean Communities uh, Committee? I was fortunate enough to be uh, uh, placed on that committee. I haven't heard anything yet. It is already March, and I just want to make sure that I'm not um, faulty of doing my due diligence. I don't think so, Ed. I don't know if you've seen any meetings scheduled or? I have not, but, but I'll, look, I'll look tomorrow. I'll look into it and. and I'll reach out to you. Thank you. Okay. The changes in the salary ordinance um, that I asked to be um, uh, stated, I don't know if they were. I, I couldn't quite hear. There's a lot of motion going on. Um, th th that's okay. That was just the introduction. Um, I, I know there's going to be a, an adoption. Maybe when this supplemental information gets put on the website for the agenda, it can kind of be written in there you know, what they're changed to, that way I already know. Um, I'd like to say something that I don't normally say um, specifically uh, through the chair to a particular council person. Um, I've been to a lot of meetings and Mr. or Councilman DeLucre has asked many, many times for information and stated that he, he would have had wanted that information before making a decision that particular night. Tonight, I saw Councilman DeLucre hand out supplemental information in the middle of a meeting to the rest of the council members, and it, it, it just seemed kind of sneaky to me. Um, I would think that um, if any council member, and let me generalize now, uh, has, has come up with an idea uh, a, a draft, a synopsis, that that report could be submitted to the city manager and, and placed in your packets so you all have several days to review before the meeting and that um, new information isn't placed uh, to the rest of the, of the committee by an individual council member in the middle of the meeting. I, I hope that I don't see that anymore for the rest of the year. 
I, I agree with the, uh, the motion on the golf course. I think you voted on the motion, the proposal that was on hand. You accomplished something. You didn't kick it down, down the road. Surely uh, things, the communications can continue with Mr. Jaworski. But now, as I stated earlier, he knows what you agree or disagree on that proposal, and, and you will find out shortly what his actual intent is. So I think the process worked. I was glad to see the motion brought on the table and voted on. The Board of Estimates, I understand they're going to be having a meeting coming up uh, sometime this month. Um, is that a public meeting? Is yes. that a public hearing where people yes. can, um, can speak? Yes, and Lynn, I, what's the date on that? It's Tuesday, the, is it 24th Tuesday? I think it's the 24th. Yeah. 24. The, the process, uh, and you're probably aware of this, John, the budget goes, the, the Board of Education votes on the budget, it goes to the County Office of Education. They approve it, then it comes back to the Board of School Estimates for a final approval. Funny you should mention that, Mayor, because they, in fact, did that just tonight. <coughs> they held a special meeting tonight, the Board of Education, um, to approve the preliminary budget. That's a pretty important meeting, I, I would think, uh, to the residents. So was this meeting on the golf course. I think it was just coincidental that both meetings were set on the same night and, and at the same time. Um, I don't think it was done intentionally, but um, maybe in the future, um, the, you know, the, this, the city manager and the business administrator uh, of the school board, you know, maybe have, have lunch or something together uh, I understand they both knew in, in both positions, so uh, I, I'm not chastising them, but when you have two important meetings that the public would want to, want to attend, the ones that are involved, that um, maybe we try our best in the future that they don't happen on the same night. Right. I'm certain that they tried to, I'm sure, find a quorum that the board members, uh, a date that the quorum could be achieved for the board members. Those budgets are due to the County Office of Education on March 9th, so. I understand. That, that's why they're. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank Let you. me respond to uh, John's comment directed to me. You don't have to leave, John. Excuse me? said so you don't have to leave. Well, I'm going to respond to the comment you directed to me. Maybe you better get your facts before you start characterizing people's behavior as sneaky. Here's a fact. I asked over a month ago for information about the not-for-profit. We have been given, as members of council, zero information about it until Friday afternoon was the first time it came through. In order to evaluate that, go back through my files on the golf course and analyze it and prepare the document I prepared, I'm sorry, it took some time. I can't meet your subjective schedule when I am given information late in the game. Explain to me why that incomplete information about the not-for-profit was given to us on the Friday before the meeting when they the majority apparently felt comfortable enough to vote on that, even though that has very little information. So yes, I do often say I want more information because I do want more information. And when I get it, I respond to it. When I get it at the 11th hour, maybe I'm not going to be able to respond to it in the timetable that you think is appropriate. But that does not mean I'm not going to respond. And if it takes until Wednesday to get it done, it takes until Wednesday. Like I said, I, I, I wouldn't want to see information passed out in the middle of the meeting, which I know is pertinent information for this council to make decisions on. I think uh, every effort should be made that it, it gets supplied to the city manager and not supplied in the middle of the meeting. That's what I said. Well, I, I was actually going to defend Rick, but uh, after that, no, um, please don't, the, worry. don't worry about Rick, it'll never happen again. <laughs> um, the reason it took a while to get the the financial information is because we still haven't had our books fixed yet. So we're still looking for, for monies. Uh, they're, they're not, I don't believe they're stolen or anything, don't get me wrong. They're just put in the wrong spot. And I wanted to make sure my proposal was accurate. And when I got it done on Thursday night, I got, made sure it got out to council so they had the opportunity to look at it. 
it, I mean, it's not rocket science. It didn't have to take six months to look at it and make a decision. But <clears throat> again, I was going to defend my colleague down there, and uh, and I withdraw that. Thank you. <laughs> Just um, one point of correction, Rick. We did not vote for the nonprofit tonight. We voted uh, rejected the proposal by Jaworski. So Which is a very fine distinction, Phil, because there's nothing else on the table. Two years in, people have been saying, let's look at all the alternatives. What do we have? Well, let's just be accurate, nothing. Rick. There was not an affirmative vote here this evening to establish a nonprofit. There was a discussion of that as an option, but there was not an affirmative vote. Distinction noted. Anyone else in the, the public like to, uh, to comment? Motion to adjourn? No, okay. I have one council uh, comment. Something? Council comment? Yes. Uh, I think it's important that council as a body recognize exceptional work by city employees and tonight there was an exceptional job done by John Doring in his explanation of the tonnage grant application. <laughs> and I applaud you, John. Who's that? Is that tied to that type? And, um, At the buzzer. <laughs> the uh, Chief Reed and Chief Weiner, you're probably saying, you know, I'm glad I'm not part of the golf course uh, this evening. Your day will come. I'll make a motion <laughs> to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Great. Um, once again, I want to thank everyone who attended this evening, everyone who offered an opinion on the matters that were before council, and uh, for everyone who tuned in at home. Thank you for tuning in to see your council at work.